I'm Eve Lyon, Recovery Navigator for Career Source Research Coast. Welcome to St. Lucie Recovery Works, an initiative supported by the Florida Department of Economic Opportunity. In an effort to connect the social service and treatment service providers and the judicial and law enforcement systems to the workforce development community, I invite guests each month for conversations on prevention, treatment, and recovery to highlight the resources and success stories that demonstrate recovery is possible. Our ultimate goal is to improve outcomes for people with substance use disorder and mental health challenges, conditions that affect millions of people across the globe, people from all walks of life and all age groups. These illnesses are common, recurrent, and often serious, but they are treatable and many people do recover. Mental disorders involve changes in thinking, mood, and or behavior. These disorders can affect how we relate to others and make choices. Substance use disorder is a treatable mental disorder that affects a person's brain and behavior. People with a substance use disorder may also have other mental health disorders and people with mental health disorders may also struggle with substance use. We all know someone who is personally dealing with these challenges or we know a family who is coping with a loved one who may be struggling. Substance use disorder is not a moral failing. It is a treatable disease and three out of four people who experience substance use disorder will recover. Fortunately, We have many resources locally to help inform, educate, and support people in recovery and people who are seeking treatment. Before I introduce my first guest, I'd like to recommend that you grab some paper and pen. You may hear some useful information tonight and contact information that you would want to make a note on. My first guest tonight is Janice Greller, Executive Director of NAMI, Martin County. NAMI is the National Alliance on Mental Illness. Welcome, Janice. Welcome, and thank you for having me. Oh, really pleased to have you here this evening. We want to acknowledge that May is Mental Health Awareness Month. Can you please explain the programs and supportive resources that are available through NAMI? Certainly. NAMI is part of the National Alliance on Mental Illness and the nation's largest grassroots mental health organization dedicated to building better lives for millions of Americans affected by mental illness. And NAMI Martin County brings together families, friends, and individuals whose lives have been affected by mental illness here in Martin County and the surrounding areas. We provide support groups for family members that have loved ones with a mental health diagnosis, as well as support groups, the connections groups for people that have a mental health diagnosis. So you're serving both the families as well as the people who are supporting family members. That's correct. That's great. It's such a necessary and helpful organization. We also provide a family-to-family course, which is an eight-week program. It's specifically for families and those that have loved ones with mental illness. It's a very in-depth program that covers pharmacology, communication, de-escalation, and diagnosis, and so much more. Wonderful. So what are the core values of NAMI? The core values are to support, educate, and advocate uh, by supporting the families, educating people on mental illness, and to advocate for better programs, better funding for people that have a mental health disorder. I also like to go back to the programs that we have because we have the family support programs which meet on the first and third Monday of every month at St. Mary's in Stewart. We have the peer connections support groups. They meet weekly via Zoom on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 6 to 7.30 p.m. And the information for that you can find on our website. And our peer connections support group in person meets on Tuesday from 2 to to 3.30 p.m. Port St. Lucie, at the Port St. Lucie Center, 2195 Southeast Arosa Boulevard in Port St. Lucie. Okay, great. I was going to ask you where everybody meets. So um, that's the, um, actually, it's the Port St. Lucie Community Center where they meet in person on, and that's on Tuesdays. Tuesdays yes. So um, St. Mary's is um, on um, 623 Southeast Ocean Boulevard in Stewart. That's correct. The virtual, how do they actually get connected to the, um, the virtual sessions? On our website, namimartincounty.org. Okay. Great. So they could get um, information on all of these groups and learn how to connect to any of these groups by going to the website, which is namimartincounty.org. So who would benefit from participation? Those that have loved ones with a mental health diagnosis, family members, as well as friends 
and spouses, they would benefit. Okay. Attending our support groups, when you come in, it's scary because you feel like you're the only one that has this situation going on in your life. You come to find out that you're not the only one that has this situation going on and you're not alone. I think most people, when they come to our meeting, it's so satisfying to hear them say, I am not alone, as well as we end our meetings, mostly all our meetings with never give up hope. And hope is just a wonderful thing. Okay. And sometimes it's hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Absolutely. So um, is there a cost to participate? No. Okay, that's great. It's it's all free. I know, I think you have a personal story of how your life was changed through association with NAMI. So maybe that would be an example for people who are listening to understand how it can be so helpful. Yes. When I was growing up, my twin brother, I come from a family of seven, my twin brother and I were watching television. A TV commercial came on for United Way, and it said one in seven will be affected with mental illness. Well, there were seven children in our family, and my brother looked at me and he said, one of us is going to be mentally ill. And we kind of laughed about it because we didn't know any better. Mm -hmm. And as time went on, one of our brothers, Dan, became diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia and that took a toll on the family he went away to college and had a psychotic break he called home saying that people were after him and the fbi was looking for him and all sorts of things that made no sense fortunately at that point in time there were mental institutions dan stayed at a Haverford Mental Institution for six months where he received very good care he was put on medication and through his life he passed away at the age of 61 the voices never stopped And they got to the point where he started using substances Mm. to take away those voices. Um, I wish today that my parents had had NAMI to attend because I think their life would have been a lot more easier. Yeah, I know you shared with me that this resource for you has been a way to really find support. And we really just want to encourage anybody who is struggling this way with either individually themselves, a family member, even a friend, you will find people who are living the same challenges you are living. And it's really, really a wonderful way to get support, understanding, just connect with people who can really help you. I would like to mention too that paranoid schizophrenia is a scary diagnosis and a lot of people are fearful. They think that paranoid schizophrenia is someone that's out there that's going to hurt others. My brother Danny had just such a gentle heart and a gentle spirit. I just would like to say that he was I I appreciate that you said that because I also have a stepson who um, struggles with mental um, challenges and he also would never hurt a flea. (laughs) Uh, He's just the sweetest man but he does um, you know he has struggles. There's no question about So what advice would you want to share with listeners tonight who may be struggling themselves or trying to support a family member or friend? I would encourage them to try NAMI, to come to a support group. And also, I suggest that because you won't feel alone. You'll find hope. Talk to people that are going through the same situations that you're going through. Maybe not the same, but very similar. You're not alone. And I know that, you know, you said everyone has a story and you know how, from experience, how difficult it can be for a family member to not have the tools, as you mentioned earlier, to be able to support their loved ones. So we really want to encourage connecting to NAMI. So thank you so much, Janice, for this very useful information. My next guest is also from NAMI. Welcome, Kathy Chatfield-Taylor. Kathy, as a Connections Facilitator, what is your role at the local NAMI affiliate? Hi, Evan. Thanks for having me here today. Welcome. Um, since joining NAMI Martin County, I've participated in both the NAMI Family and Friends Support Group and the NAMI Connection Recovery Peer Support Group. When I saw the support group facilitators in action, I decided that I wanted to learn how to be a facilitator too. I completed the training courses offered by NAMI National to earn certification as a facilitator for both peer-led support groups. And so you're role as a volunteer for NAMI? I facilitate support groups and I also lend support in marketing communications for the executive director. Oh, okay, great. And so you have attended these groups both as a family member, a peer, and also a facilitator, right? You've participated in like every aspect of the group. I've been a participant, a facilitator, I've been a family member, and I've been a peer. Okay, great. So you really can talk the talk. So how long have you been involved with NAMI? I've only been involved with NAMI for about a year. I actually found NAMI Martin County using Google to search for mental health resources near me, and it popped right up. My original intent was to become a volunteer, but I quickly found that NAMI could help me on my own journey. Wonderful. So do you have a personal story that you're comfortable sharing to encourage others to connect with the valuable support through NAMI? Yes. Now, um, 
and I, and I would say I'm comfortable sharing it, <laughs> but I do share it because it's um, National Awareness Month, okay. and I feel that that speaking out and making people aware is really important. So my story is not unusual in that I have a dual diagnosis of mental illness and alcohol abuse. It started with the onset of depression as a teenager, and I had a good life by any measure, but I was desperately unhappy for many years. I self-medicated with alcohol and didn't seek professional help until I was in my 30s. My illness affected my family life and impacted my career in a very tangible way. I ended up quitting 12 jobs in 15 years. Oh my goodness. I eventually became a freelance writer who, so I could work from home, where I was able to juggle my work, parenting, and my mental health ups and downs. And now you do that <laughs> successfully. I, I had a long, successful career as a freelance writer. And yeah. thanks to the support network that I put in place between my, my medical professionals and my peer support. Well, congratulations. Can imagine that your affiliation with NAMI is a blessing. Um, and we should mention that it did take you know, some time to receive appropriate diagnosis and effective medication. So we mm -hmm. want to encourage people not to give up, that there is help available. Exactly. Right? I mean, and medication is not the cure-all. So when we have mental illness or our family members are uh, ill, we sometimes think that we're going to go to the doctor and we're going to get a pill and things are going to be fine. And I wish it were that way. Treating mental illness is a multimodal business. It requires the medication, it requires therapy, it requires support groups, it requires family and friends who are understanding and supportive of you when you're having uh, not so good days. Mm -hmm. So um, it really, it's it's fairly complicated, but with diligence, you can put together a network that really supports you. So I know, um, that, you know, we talk about advice, but you, you're definitely giving wonderful advice right now. I know that you would encourage to just don't be afraid to ask for help, right? Exactly. Um, I think, you know, the stigma of mental illness, especially when we're working, if we have something going on in our private life that is affecting our work, but we're afraid to talk about it. For me, um, I never told an employer that I had an illness or that I was struggling because I was afraid of the backlash. Now today, this is many years later, and I feel that um, there is much more tolerance and understanding. There are uh, programs in place at the workplace where you can get aid. And so to reach out and just ask, you know, uh, if not at the workplace, then at home with your personal physician, they'll help you get the right kind of um, help and things will eventually get better. It takes time, but it will get better. Thank you for that, those encouraging words and for sharing your story. Um, as we're highlighting that May is Mental Health Awareness Month, we, we want to feature local service providers. So our next guests are going to be from Legacy Behavioral Health Centers who can provide that therapeutic treatment that you just spoke about. So thank you so much for sharing your story and for joining us tonight. Sure, thanks for having me. We are privileged to have Miguel Garcia of Legacy Behavioral Health Center to speak with us next. Welcome, Miguel. Welcome. Thank you so much oh, for giving us the opportunity to be here. Really happy to have you. So as Vice President of Operations, what are you responsible for overseeing? Well, in a nutshell, um, I oversee the daily operations. Okay. Right? I ensure that our processes are standardized across all six sites. By making that possible, uh, we make sure that um, our clients are receiving quality service from the moment they come into the office for the initial intake until they're being discharged from the agency. Okay. I know that when we um, were preparing for this it, quality service, it was very evident to me that that is a key priority for, for the operation and the organization. You went into some detail about, you know, when somebody first comes in the door, how they received is, is as important as the service that they eventually do get. Absolutely. Especially now that such a need for services, you know, after COVID, people are requesting more services and we got to do a good job to making sure that we are providing that highest quality And that they're comfortable. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So can you speak about the core values of the organization? We're focused on providing the high quality of service. We don't discriminate uh, regardless of gender, sexual orientation, um, ethnicity. Uh, we encourage, you know, um, equality and we make sure that um, we have a diverse staff that will mimic our uh, clients that we're serving the community. Okay, really important. Absolutely. I know you encourage honesty and, yes. and you want to ensure access to care for all. 
Yes, absolutely. Yeah. That, that's so, very important. Again, valuing that service of excellence. So if someone is thinking about seeking support or a family member is listening and they would benefit from Legacy Behavioral Health Services, how do they find you? Sure, absolutely. So uh, to inquire more about our services, you can go to our website. So it's www.legacybhc.com. Or you can call our phone number, 772-873-8811, and press option 4, and we'll be connected to our admissions department. And then you also have um, an email link on the website as well. They could just send an email if yeah. that's what they're comfortable with. Absolutely. Doing. So you can send it to our general email. It's at legacy at legacybhc.com. I know we talked uh, that you have like central intake. So I know that you have six locations, but that one um, website link or initial phone link would uh, help somebody to connect to whatever is the most appropriate location for them. Correct? Absolutely. So when you call our admissions department, um, we'll identify um, the place where that client resides and we'll make sure that when we do the um, the scheduling for the intake we do it at that specific um, site where the client's located okay at. to make it convenient yes so what is the process to begin treatment so a new client that comes to the office uh, will do an initial intake um, the screener will assess um, the services that um, um, they're suggesting or they're um, are requiring and um, after um, we do the uh, treatment plan in which we specify the client needs psychiatric services or therapy, TCM or psychological, then we make sure that it's being referred to those programs. Okay, so it begins with an assessment and then you determine the best appropriate referral to yes. the service that, that would be best for the individual. Absolutely. Are there fees to access services? No, we are a Medicaid provider. Oh, um, so okay. Yes. Uh, so those clients that cannot um, pay, we do have a fee scale. Um, also, we have some grant funding for underinsured or uninsured. Okay, probably minimal grant funding. Yeah, yeah. yeah but um, any way you can to help the community. Absolutely, right? absolutely. It's a good option to be able to provide that um, facility also. So, do you partner with other community organizations to provide services? Yes, um, it's very important, especially now, as I said. Um, services are so important. Um, we do partnership with inpatient facilities like hospitals. Um, uh, substance abuse, or domestic violence agencies, ECF, DJJ, and the school board. Okay. We have to work hand in hand um, with the community, and that's why for us is very important. So I know that yeah, you you do want to ensure that the client is connected to all the resources that can benefit them, and you are advocates for the process. Yes, in absolutely, a sense. it's yeah. very important for us. Okay. So I'm impressed that many of your locations are in areas where people are underserved. Can you talk about that? Because it it just really touches my heart to know where you operate. Absolutely. So we have six offices. Uh, we have one office in Stewart, Indian Town, Okeechobee. Port St. Lucie, Vero Beach, absolutely, yes. Vero Beach and Brevard. We started in 2005 in a small office in um, Indian Town. Amazing. And it's still a flagship of ours 18 years later. It's a special place. We started there and our president, our executive vice president, you can see them vacuuming the, the rug and making coffee and all that. It was a very gratifying area. But as we started seeing clients coming from Port St. Lucie, Okeechobee, Vero Beach, we decided that we needed to expand our services. So that's that's terrific. And the um, Port St. Lucie location is just on Prima Vista? Yes. So okay. it's a yeah. 518 uh, Southwest Prima Vista Boulevard. Okay. Great. Right there. But also Vero Beach, Brevard, and Stewart. Yes. So there's a spot for everybody. Yes. On the yes, Treasure yes. Coast. And the Treasure Coast. Yeah. So do you have a closing message that you would like to share with the community? I think hope. Okay. Um, I believe that legacy is a ray of light in which anybody that uh, wants to access to services, make sure that they know that we're here for them. Um, and yeah, so just make sure that we are providing that hope and need it for those I know. And you out. mentioned, you know, the pandemic is it's waning, it's over, but there are stresses that people are dealing with. And uh, certainly, uh, I think the services at Legacy can help um, build recovery. Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. So we really want to ensure that. Yes. So thank you, Miguel. Thank uh, you so much for having us. Perfect segue to introduce our final guest. Rochelle Giovannini, also from Legacy Behavioral Health Center. Welcome, Rochelle. As clinical director and corporate compliance officer, Please talk about some of the therapeutic approaches and techniques offered at Legacy Behavioral Health 
that help people to change behavior patterns and experience more fulfilling and meaningful lives. Good evening, everyone, <laughs> and thank you again for inviting us and for the opportunity. Really and wonderful to have you here. It's a pleasure being here. Yes. All right, so a few of the therapeutic approaches and techniques that we use at Legacy Behavior Health uh, would include behavior modification, trauma-focused CBT, which is cognitive behavior therapy, uh, parenting skills, motivational interviewing, mindfulness, and cognitive behavior therapy, which is, um, I'd like to expand yes, a little please, bit, yes. um, because some people don't know what that's all right. about. Uh, it's an evidence-based approach and works on the relationship between your thoughts, feelings and emotions, and also behaviors. Uh, it's proven that your thoughts can create emotions, and those emotions or feelings can actually drive behaviors. And this type of therapy works on uh, us identifying and connecting negative thoughts that could influence uh, emotions or can trigger undesirable or even harmful behaviors. So you develop coping skills essentially through this practice. Absolutely. Yes. You learn a little more about you and you control those negative thoughts and reframing those thoughts. Love you it. might improve your behaviors. And I personally have experienced, not myself, but I'm working with others who have utilized this treatment and really changed their lives for the better. So uh, I know that it works. I've seen it in, in real life. <laughs> Absolutely. So um, who's a typical client? Okay, well... Uh, there is no typical client, Of course there right? isn't. <laughs> okay, but um, so I'm going to give you a little brief summary of the clients okay. that we get. Uh, okay. We work with all ages. Yes. Uh, and we also have different cultural backgrounds. Yes. Uh, there's no discrimination. We see a great uh, variety of diagnoses. Uh, we are not specialized in a certain diagnosis. However, it is important to say that Legacy Behavior Health is a community mental health center, and our focus really is in mental health, not so much, much on in the substance, substance abuse. Yeah. Of course, we have dual diagnosis. Uh, we work with the client if they have substance abuse issues, but that's not our right. main focus. It's not your core mm -hmm. service. Yeah, you know, we say that a typical client, all cultures, and and I know that in some cultures, uh, stigma is unfortunately something that hinders people from seeking help. So what is your advice for those who may not seek help because of misunderstood stigma associated with treatment? Mm, absolutely. And I can even relate to that based on my background, okay. the Hispanic background, yes. right? Dirty laundry, you take care Correct. at home, yep. right? You don't bring that up. You don't talk about it. Well, we are here to assure you that you can bring your dirty laundry to us and it's all private. Uh, just reach out, yep. you know, ask questions, uh, have a very clear and open communication with us, uh, which I think is the crucial part of being successful in reaching your goals in treatment. Okay, thank you for saying that. I, it is so important. So can you talk about how common it is for a person to have challenges that can be worked through to help manage personal growth, interpersonal relationships, family concerns, marriage issues, and mm -hmm. just the hassle of daily life? We all have our stories, yep. right? And that includes all successes, happy moments, sad moments, breakups. We believe that owning our own story is part of healing. So therapy can teach you how to work through this process and promote personal growth, uh, which is going to reflect on more positive relationships and also learning different coping skills to deal with those things that we deal with on a daily basis that we have no control over. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah, That's sure. really a wonderful explanation. So what is the best way for someone to offer support, guidance, and direction to potential resources when dealing with a person who appears to be overwhelmed or in distress? Like if you want to support somebody else, mm -hmm. what's mm -hmm. the best way? Well, Legacy Behavior Health, we are a community behavior health center, right? And that's what we believe. If you know someone in the community who is struggling and needs support, encourage them okay encourage That's them to the keyword yes encouragement. yes encouragement uh to accept that maybe they need to talk to someone they might need help and it's okay it's all right to be vulnerable don't tell encourage that uh, there's a big difference between telling somebody you need to do this you should do that mm -hmm. and no just encourage and gently you know give some guidance that there are resources encourage it, it offer support to help them connect to resources 
don't tell somebody what they should or need to do. Absolutely. So what message of hope and encouragement would you like to leave our listeners with tonight? We are here to really support you, to understand you. Your voice has the most value to us. We have a little logo in our admissions department, yeah. and I'm kind of proud of it. Okay. Uh, it says, ring the bell to make a difference. I love that. And that's how we, we train our staff. You know, when we are able to connect with someone and truly offer help, uh, we ring that bell because that is the beginning of many possible positive changes to come. And you showed me a picture of it. It actually has a smiley face a on smiley it. A smiley face, it's yes. It's very cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, a huge thank you to my guests for the work that you do to support some of the most vulnerable people in our communities. If someone is listening and would like to connect or access help for yourself, a friend, co-worker, or a family member, 211 is available 24-7, any day of the week any hour of the day. They don't provide direct service in the moment, but they will connect you to the appropriate resources in the community. So you can either dial 211 on your phone or you can go to 211.org. And I'm also always available. So my email is elion at careersourcerc.com. That's E-L-Y-O-N at careersourcerc.com. Thank you for listening. Please tune in next month at 7 p.m. on June 26th, when we'll discuss our Career Source Research Coast Recovery Friendly Workplace Toolkit and more.